Look how beautiful these plants are. I have two varieties and there's tons of varieties out there, but let's just talk about these two. Hey y'all, so let's talk about Calatheums. Look at this one. And then I have this one. So I'm going to tell you about all about how I take care of these. This one here stays at my husband's job. He's doing a great job of keeping it healthy. And this one here is located in my home office. But I want to just talk to you about them and maybe you'll want to add them to your collection too. Okay, so let's talk about the Calatheum plant. And let's start with, to me, the most striking part of this plant which are the leaves. If you look at these leaves, they're a bright green. They've got the dark hunter pattern, dark hunter green pattern in them. And the underside of this particular Calatheum is purple. What a beautiful plant this is. You don't even need flowers, and I love flowers. This plant holds its own. So as far as the care for the Calatheums, they really like to be in a moist environment, not soggy. The soil does not need to be soggy. They like humidity. So you want to think this is a tropical plant, so you want to keep it in a in a humid area. So if you if you're um, if your home is dry, there are some ways that you can remedy that. This particular plant here um, is kept in my husband's office. He has an interior office with no windows, so it only gets the light from the artificial light that comes through with the overhead lighting. And then on the weekends, he puts it in a window so that it gets a little bit of indirect sunlight. So you don't need, it's a low light plant, you do not listen. If my husband has not killed this plant, he's had it for two years, then you can do this plant too. This is a great conversational piece. This particular variety of Calithium is called a rattlesnake variety. There are tons of varieties, but um, I've also heard it being called a praying hands plant because what happens is when the when it becomes darker, the leaves pull together like they're praying, which I think is so neat, which is why I say it could be a conversational plant. Um, so if you are ever in a room and it's quiet, you might even hear these leaves kind of rustle together as they start to close. And the beauty of that, once they still start, even once the leaves have closed together, because that underside of the leaf is that purple, that deep purple, almost looks like silk the leaf is still very striking very pretty so i don't know i've heard of this plant not only being referenced as a rattlesnake plant but also as a peacock plant and that also makes a whole bunch of sense to me too because if you look at the leaves the um, edges of the leaves are scalloped so just look how pretty this plant is and i could go on and on about the way it looks i, can't, I shouldn't even really say it's pretty because it belongs to my husband this is a very handsome plant and he has enjoyed it just as much as I've enjoyed having the other variety here at the house and I'm going to try to show you here when I brought it out of the dark it kind of spread back out again when I went to go film it but this is kind of what it looks like when it's dark so all those leaves kind of come together which is just super neat cool cool feature of this plant okay here's the next variety here now this variety of Calithium is called a leper, Leopardina, I think is that how you say it, a Leopardina, but it's different because the bottom side of course is not purple, however it's still very very striking. It's got the pattern leaves, the dark hunter green, the bright green striations throughout the leaf. Um, I just got this one, this one I've only had for about six months and I keep it in my like an office area but it's kind of like a, um, across from a window so it's not directly sitting in front of a window but it's doing really well you can see some new leaves leaf formation in this plant now typically when I get a new plant I don't immediately go and repot it I like to see how it's gonna do how it's gonna thrive in the area and oftentimes plants like to be a little bit close together and root bound before you start to repot them And then when you do finally go to repot them, just make sure you put them in a well-draining soil. You don't want there to be a lot of moisture just stuck in the pot. So make sure you're using a good potting soil mix when you go to repot this plant. So 
So with this one here, think again, this is like a tropical plant. So you want to keep it in an environment that's kind of, when you think of a jungle or think of Florida in the summer, <laughs> how humid it could be if you've ever been to Florida. So that's how you want to keep this environment. This particular one, I have it on a rock tray. If you see my house plant tour, you'll see that I have it sitting on a bed of rocks. And then I just kind of put some water in there to kind of keep the environment around the plant moist, moist or humid. Um, you can also spray the, spray the environment, mist it every now and then. That will also keep the moisture in the air around the plant. So keep the moisture in the air around the plant. So, I mean, as far as just like most house plant, this is another clean air plant. And if you need to fertilize it, you just want to make sure that you're doing it with a, you know, a regular um, household fertilizer. You don't have to keep it at high strength or anything like that. It doesn't really need a whole lot of that. But this is it. That's my Calathium plants. I will definitely be looking to get some more of these. If you have any questions, any concerns, or any suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.